Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, we're indoors because it's 116 locally with heat index. Beginning of June, we got a lot of high pressure on it. And yes, I can get out there, but why stress yourself? You know, when you get a few years on you like I got, and I've had heart issues in the past, it, the doctor says it's best I don't overheat. So I have to play it a little more by ear. So when I go out, i got to go out early in the morning. And today I couldn't do that. But I want to do this video for you. Now, we're going to do a little project. Actually, we're going to do a little modification. Um, recently, I looked at the Campcraft website. And Jason had put up some seconds. And what the second was, and I'll show you a close-up in a minute, is this little bitty pouch. And this was originally designed for wearing around the neck. It's got a loop up here at the top, which I got another idea for. And it's got a belt loop on the back of it. And it's got a snap on it. It's wax canvas. And it's got an opening. However, they made the opening too small on several of them. And so Jason put them marked down at a cheaper price because this is smaller. Now you could probably wedge an Altoids tin in that. But I wanted it for a little bigger. But I got to looking at it and realized how easy it would be to modify it to make it open up. And so what I did was, for my puck that I showed in a recent video, will not fit into these. Not even close. There's no way it's going to go into that opening. And I went ahead and got three of these pouches. I made a little modification so now it fits real easy in there. And I've got me a pouch for the puck. I also want a little belt pouch, and I'm thinking about doing something a little differently with it. So, I'm going to show you how we do a quick modify to this. Now, the simple thing is, keep your eyes open. A lot of times, your favorite channel or your favorite store or whatever, they'll have, oops, we did this. You know, and it never hurts. Okay? If you've got a major manufacturer like Jason and, and Campcraft making all those canvas products, to send them a thing and say, uh, do you have any uh-ohs that you're discounting? Because you never know where there's something to go, hey, I can make that work. And when you do, you make a score, save a little bit of money, and nowadays saving money is a big thing. So, let me set the camera down close, and we're going to modify this pouch like I modified this pouch and make it into what I wanted. Stay with me. Okay, guys, what we're going to be using is a speed stitcher sometimes called a speedy stitcher. These things have been around from ever. This was made by the Stewart Manufacturing Company out of Worcester, Massachusetts. But if you go online, you can find them. Walmart carries them. All kinds of places carry these. Now, what it ha what it, how this works is you have this collar that unscrews, and there's three different types of needles. You select the type of needle you want, and you put it up here, and the thread comes from a bobbin down here in the bottom that you refill. See, there's the bobbin. You put the thread in it, then you put the little center guide in there. It, the thread comes out through a hole, goes around this pin one time. that goes to this lock, comes up, comes to the center, and comes up here and laces in. Now that puts a little tension on it. So what you want to do is you want to pull it to get you a pretty good length piece. Okay, I won't need nearly that much, but this is for demonstration purposes. To keep the needle from pulling, I can push my thumb against the base of the needle and pinch it, okay? Now, let me show you the modified one first to compare them. Here, when they sewed, they followed this seam around and they came right there and they reinforced it and that made the pocket too small. What I did was I cut those seams where that thread went through and allowed that pouch to open and then I reinforced sewed on the inside four stitches on the side to anchor it. This opened this up. Now that's how big the pouch is modified that's how big the pouch is unmodified. So you can see quite a difference. Now what I want to carry in here is I want to carry a fire kit which is a, a tender, a little box of tender this is an old bushcraft thing I've got. It's got all kinds of tenders in it. I've showed this in my fire kits before. 
Another little trick you can do is find somebody that, that uses chews snuff or chews tobacco or something like that and get their plastic cans. These cans are great for tender carriers because I've got this solid pack with red cedar shavings and then I've taken tape and ran all the way around to seal it up. Now that makes a small puck that I can pull the tape off and open up to have good dry tender and the tape can also burn as a tender itself. And I want it to slide to the inside like that. And then that snap will snap it closed. And it's got the belt loop on it already. And then this loop up here is where a cord is supposed to go through for you to hang it around your neck. I'm going to turn that into a carrier for a ferrocium rod right there. Make that connect around that like that. So I'll have this on my belt and I'll have a ferrocium rod tucked back next to me and have easy access and still have room in here to pack additional tinder down around it. And this is a waterproof pouch. So this will make a good belt size possum like grab fire kit. And that's what I'm thinking. Okay, let's talk about modification. First thing we've got to do is cut this line of stitching. Now this line of stitching, as you can see right here, goes all the way through. It is not this line of stitching where they sewed the pouch together. So what i got to do is I've got to pull it. See how I can pull those pieces and right there's that first stitch. What I need is a sharp, thin blade to go between and cut just that thread. Okay, for that I'm going to use my old Barlow pocket knife here. Good thin blade and a good point tip. So I'm going to pull that and get that real close and sit right on that top edge, right where that thread is, like that. And get that first thread to cut. As soon as it does, I pull outward. See how it opens up a little? Cut. Open it. This is called seam ripping. I'm not damaging the product. I'm just getting rid of that attachment, that focal point right there. Do it real slow. Notice how I'm turning my knife upward. I'm taking that tip and sliding it under the thread and letting the edge, instead of cutting down the might cut the, the wax canvas, I just want to cut that thread. Now I'm pretty sure you can't see it, but you can see the thread right there. It's a different color. I just pull it and then pop it. Pull it. Pop it. Like that. Until I get down past that whole length, almost there. I remember when I was real little, my grandmother uh, took care of me a lot. And uh, we didn't have playtime. There was some sort of project we had to work on. And quite often that project involved sewing, mending, fixing, whatever. And I can remember her handing me a seam ripper as a small child and telling me to rip all the seams out of a pair of blue jeans that somebody had donated to the cause and we were recycling to make them into something else. All right, now see, now that I've cut that, it opens up. See, this is just pinned. I'm unpinning it. Now I've got that extra thread free, okay? Now, let's talk about how we're going to sew with this stitcher. We're going to use four stitches. One, two, three, four stitches. Okay? One, two, three, four. If I just sew it, one, two, three, four, I've got to tie a big knot. Because as you see me pull this apart, that's exactly what will happen up here at the the crease it'll just spread apart. I have to tie it and lock it. So I'm going to do four stitches. I'm going to go number three first. Go to number four. Go back to number three. Then go to number two. Then go to number one. And then reverse and come back to number two. That way this and this is bound and the center is actually holding the two. I can pull it tight and I don't have to leave a knot. It'll lock itself that way. 
Now what you're going to do with this is you're going to, I don't need quite that much, so I'm going to pull it back a little bit. I'm going to push it all the way through the material. When I do, I'm going to pull this tab all the way to the inside, and I'm going to pull back. So now it's through the material, like that, okay? Now when I go in again up here top, it's going to form a loop like that when I pull back, and I'm going to take this end reach up and go through that loop. That's how I tie it together, okay? So I get down here, I pull my pouch open like I want. Okay, before we get started, let's talk about the needle. The needle, one of them has a very long channel in it and a very short channel on the opposite side. You want the long channel to where the thread comes out so that, that thread will lay down in that notch, okay? Then you thread the stitcher. Just like that. That way when I go to pull it out, that thread will lay down inside that needle and be less friction to come back out, okay? Now I've got a nice long piece right there. I take and I go to what will be my third position hole. I'm going to wiggle and push it through, making sure not to stab myself in the finger. And then I'm going to pull that running thread out, just like that. Now I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to go downhill to the fourth hole I would be making. And I'm going to push it back in, just like that. And now I'm hoping you can see this. Let me get it where you can see it. You push in, and then when you come backwards, see how it... Stands up, so I stand it up, I take this long running piece, and I go through that hole I just created. Now I hold it, pinch it, come straight back, pull the two threads opposite, that's how they lock. Now I go back into the third position hole, go through it again, this is going to lock the thread. Alright, again. Come through and then pull back. When I pull back, see that thing want to kink up? Ah, right there. Now I take my running thread and I go through that hole. Hold it. Pull back. Now pull them together tight. Now I'm going to pull, get myself some slack. Go up here, go to position number two. Punch through. Pull back. See, it stands up right there. Go lace through it. Grab it and hold it. Pull back. Now go to position one up here. First hole at the top. Harpoon. No, I didn't miss. I didn't catch it. There we go. Harpoon through. Pull back. See, it stand up. And notice I'm going through the same way every time. So I'm going sort of, uh, I'll say, left to right for me. Every time I lace it, it don't really matter that much, but I think it just works better to do that. Now I pull it back tight. And then I'm go, going to give myself a little bit of slack. Oops, got a bind up. Sometimes you get a little bind where you thread don't want to, come out of the bobbin. That's okay. That's reading it's easy to get to. Something gets bound up or whatever. Alright, now. There. Alright. Now, back to, now I've come out of my top hole, number one. Now I'm going to go back downhill and go back to number two. Going over, this is going to lock those threads together. So I'm going to line it up. I'm going to push through. I'm going to pull back, and there's going to be my lace hole right there. Take it, lace through it. Just like that. Now I pull it back, and that's got it locked. Now, pulling the whole thing tight, 
I'm going to cut it off on the outside just like that cut that long piece off on the inside just like that and that's got it sewed and secured right there that's not going to come apart see it's locked because of that by going back down through it now if this was going to be a super high stress I mean something like webbing where I'm going to put a lot of weight in it I would do like six notches up there and I would go all the way to the top and all the way back to the bottom and then go all the way back to the top again. So that's three passes through the same thing. That would hold. The material's got to break before the stitches give up. The stitches become locked together then. So, but for this simple thing, that's it. So let me come over here and do the other side right quick. Okay, that's got both sides done right there. Now my pouch is open enough that my tender tin will fit in no problem okay that loop up there on the top is now where I'm gonna put that ferro rod and all I'm gonna do is just take this cord and go around it and do a real simple little knot like that something I can get off on the trail real easy like that so now I've got something to wear on my belt that I can easily open and still stuff in here more tender but at the same time, I've got my ferro rod right there handy. That, for a pouch I got cheap, and since I got three of them, there's one unmodified. And with a little bit of modification, it become what I wanted. Pretty simple, huh? So, with that little modification, now we've got a pouch with a fire steel on it. Perfect place to carry a fire steel right there on the belt and a small fire kit. Small tin fits in there real easy, already full of char and ready to go. And I've got my fire steel on top. Very handy. Simple modification of a piece of gear. That's what it's all about. We're woods crafters. We take what we got to make what we need. Hope you enjoyed this, guys. Please leave a comment below or a like, share, subscribe if you don't mind. And I greatly appreciate all the support to my channel. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.